Come on, children. All aboard! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all day long. The conductor on the bus says, "Animal fares, animal fares, animal fares." The conductor on the bus says, "Animal fares all day long." The driver on the bus goes toot 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 toot. The driver on the bus goes toot 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 all day long. Children on the bus say yak 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 yak. The children on the bus say yak 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 all day long. The mummies on the bus say shush 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 shush. The mummies on the bus say shush 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 all day long. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. There's a big ship 
sailing and it's rocking on the sea, rocking on the sea, rocking on the sea. There's a big ship sailing and it's rocking on the sea, rocking on the sea. The captain said it will never, never do, never, never do, never, never do. The captain said it will never, never do. Never, never do The big ship sank To the bottom of the sea The bottom of the sea The bottom of the sea The big ship sank To the bottom of the sea Hi-ho Bottom of the sea There's a big ship sailing On the illy alley The illy alley The illy alley There's a big ship sailing On the illy There's a big ship sailing and it's rocking on the sea, rocking on the sea, rocking on the sea. There's a big ship sailing and it's rocking on the sea, oh, oh. rocking on the sea. The captain said it will never, never do, never, never do, never, never do. The captain said it will never, never do. The big ship sank to the bottom of the sea, the bottom of the sea, the bottom of the sea. The big ship sank to the bottom of the sea, high up, bottom of the sea, high up, bottom of the sea. Snow White. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who longed for a baby. When the queen sat sewing one winter's day, she pricked her finger and a drop of blood fell onto the snow by the window. The queen wished for a daughter with skin as white as snow, hair as black as the night, and lips as red as cherries. And one year later, her wish was granted. The king and queen had a beautiful daughter, and they called her Snow White. Sadly, the queen died, and the king remarried a very beautiful woman. She had a magic mirror she would talk to every day. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror would say, you, queen, are the fairest of them all. And the queen would be happy. Snow White grew up to be a happy, beautiful child that everybody except the queen loved. And one day, the queen was horrified when she went to her magic mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, You are fair, O oh Majesty, but Snow White is more beautiful than thee. The queen went into a rage. She ordered a huntsman to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. The huntsman took Snow White a long way into the forest, but he just couldn't kill her. Go, Snow White, run away, he said. Your stepmother wants you dead. Now go, hide in the forest. It was getting dark, and Snow White was starting to get a bit frightened when she came across a small clearing in the woods. In the clearing was the sweetest cottage she had ever seen. She knocked on the door. No one answered, so she tiptoed in. Well, what a mess, she cried. The little cottage was the messiest, dirtiest house she had ever seen. She decided to clean it up, and maybe whoever lived here would let her stay. 
It was very strange, as there were seven of everything. Seven chairs, seven sets of knives and forks, seven cups. And when Snow White went upstairs to lay down after all her hard work, she found seven little beds. Who lives in this strange little house, she thought, and without meaning to, drifted off into a deep sleep. Later that evening, when the seven little men who live in the cottage returned, they didn't recognize their house. They were most surprised to find a girl up in their bedroom. Who are you? asked Snow White, waking up and finding seven little faces staring at her. We're the seven dwarves and we live here. Who are you? I I'm Snow White and I'm sorry I'm here. But my stepmother wants to kill me. I've got nowhere else to go. And poor Snow White burst into tears. Don't be upset, said the dwarves, who hated to see girls cry. You can stay here, and we'll look after you. Oh, thank you, said Snow White, feeling a lot better. And I'll look after you all, too. And that's what they did. Every day, the dwarfs would go off to the mine in the hills where they worked, and Snow White would stay cleaning the cottage and cooking their dinner. The dwarves were always worried that the wicked queen would come looking for Snow White, and she always had to keep the door locked and not open it for anybody but them. Back at the palace, the queen, thinking Snow White was dead, went to her magic mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, Fairest queen, oh, that you are. But Snow White is still more beautiful by far. And the mirror showed a picture of Snow White living in the forest. The queen was furious. Nobody shall be fairer than I. Snow White must die. The queen disguised herself as an old peasant woman and made her way into the forest. She had in her basket some beautiful red rosy apples, but she had poisoned one half of an apple just for Snow White. When there was a knock at the door that day, Snow White didn't open it, but she went to the window to see who it was. Oh, just an old peasant woman thought Snow White. She didn't realise that it was the Queen in disguise. Hello, my dear. Would you like one of my nice, juicy apples? asked the old woman. And she handed Snow White the poisoned apple. Well, they do look lovely, said Snow White, and she took a bite. Immediately she fell to the floor the poison working straight away. Ha, 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 laughed the queen. She is dead. And she ran back into the forest. That night, when the dwarves came home, they found Snow White lying on the floor. Nothing they did could wake her up. She was dead. They didn't want to bury her in the ground, so they made her a beautiful glass coffin and lay it in the forest where they could watch over her. One day, a prince came riding in the forest. He saw Snow White in her glass coffin. He thought she was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen and begged the dwarves to let him take her home. The dwarves agreed and they lifted the glass coffin up for the prince. As they did this, one dwarf tripped and jolted the coffin. The sudden movement made the apple fall out of Snow White's mouth, and immediately she woke up. The dwarfs and the prince were delighted. 
Snow White agreed to marry the prince and went to live in his castle. The prince ordered that the wicked queen be locked in her castle for ever and ever, so she could never harm Snow White again. Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, let me taste your ware. Says the pieman unto Simon, show me first your can. And said Simple Simon to the pieman, sir, I haven't any. Simple Simon went to fishing for to catch a whale But all the water he had got was in his mother's pail Simple Simon went to look if plums grew on a thistle He pricked his finger very much which made the Simon whistle He went for water in the sieve, but soon it all ran through. And now for simple Simon, all oh, bid you all adieu.
And then it goes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies they will all so loud and we'll all feel fine when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies they will all so loud and we'll all feel fine when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, we'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out and we'll all feel fine when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, we'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out and we'll all Sammy by Margaret Airedale. Sammy was the milkman's horse, and he had brought milk to Philip's home ever since Philip could remember. Ever since Philip could remember, he had looked out for Sammy each morning and given him a carrot or a piece of bread. Sammy would put his head over the gate, sniff carefully with a giant nostril at the carrot, and then munch it up gratefully. Then he would blow his warm breath down onto Philip's hands, and he always smelt of hay. Philip loved him. But this morning, Ben the milkman's face was rather glum. We shan't be bringing you milk much longer, Philip, said he. I'm going to sell my milk round, and the new milkman will have a van. Oh, no, cried Philip. I don't want a new milkman. And what will become of Sammy? Suddenly he felt frightened. He had heard of horses being replaced by vans before, and nobody ever heard of them again. I shouldn't like a van myself, admitted Ben. Sammy follows me up the street with the milk and stops at all the right houses. But I'm going abroad and I can't take him with me. Sammy lowered his great head and pushed his velvet nose into Philip's hands, seeking a carrot. Philip hugged him and then ran back into the house. Philip worried a lot during the next few days until Uncle Peter came to carry him off to the market garden farm in the country for a change. Aunt Edna and Gran made a great fuss of him, and his cousin showed him all over the farm. I'm going to look after the horses some day, said Philip, and Gran nodded and said she'd rather have horses than motor cars any day. She couldn't get about much now, and she looked very thoughtful. He told Gran and Uncle Peter all about Sammy. Yes, said Uncle Peter. It's a shame, but you know, horses should not be about on busy roads. He took a deep breath of country air. I don't know how they breathe, poor things, with all those petrol fumes about. Philip's cousins had gone back to school before he went home, and he wandered about aimlessly. Gran found him a job at last. How about cleaning up the old trap? she said, and showed Philip a picture of it taken years ago. 
It used to look so smart with its big yellow wheels clicking round in the sun. So Philip got busy. He got very wet too and very happy, splashing round with buckets of water, wet brushes, wet clothes and at last dry dusters. It really did look smashing, said Uncle Peter. When Philip got home, Sammy was gone. He wondered where his friend was and hoped he'd got a good home. He missed the morning meeting with Sammy at the gate, for you couldn't feed a van with carrots or bread or apples, could you? Gran wants to know, said Mummy one morning, if you'd like to go and stay for the Easter holidays. Philip said, yes, please. So off he went, all by himself in the little local train that stopped at all the stations on the way. Gran, of all people, was waiting for him at the station. Gran, he said, how did you get here? Where's Uncle Peter? Gran laughed. Never mind, Uncle Peter, she said. I've come to meet you with my new friend. Gran led him outside the station, and there, would you believe it, stood the trap with bright yellow painted wheels. Oh, said Philip, and climbed in. For a moment, he wondered where the friend was, but soon he was chattering twenty to the dozen while Gran drove. Once, the trap stopped at a gateway, and Gran laughed and shook the reins. Outside, in the country lanes, they went spanking along, the yellow wheels clicking and sparkling in the sun, till Philip could look at nothing else. It wasn't until they reached the farmyard and Gran called, Whoop, Sammy, that Philip looked at the horse. Whoopee! he called and sprang down onto the ground. He ran round to the horse's head. It is! It is! It is, Sammy! he cried. Yes, of course, said Gran. He and I are old friends now, and he knows everyone in the village that I know. I wanted to see if he would settle before we told you about him. He takes me all over the countryside. And he will always be here, said Philip, who had somewhere found a piece of carrot for Sammy, who was blowing and neighing and pawing with pleasure. He'll always be here when I come to stay. Jump in my boat. I can see for miles down the stream. Oh, <laughs> 